Hi, let's see the basic demo and working of a DE10 Lite FPGA Ultra Max 10 port. Uh, for that, we need the tool called Quartus Prime, and uh, we have a light edition available for free, which you can download from the official website of Intel. So, here is the light edition. So, based on the operating system, keep it downloaded and installed. Um, so basically there are three steps uh, that has to be taken care uh, in the entire process. The first one is writing the Verilog code and compiling it. Uh, the second one is pin configuration or pin mapping wherein um, the FPGA pins has to be mapped with the input and output ports of the Verilog code. And the third step is to dump the finally final memory file uh, from the Quartus Prime to the uh, DE10 Lite and uh, to run the program in the real hardware. So let's see all the three processes uh, completely in this. So once you are done with the installation, uh, run the program. So this is how it looks when you start the program. So first uh, we need to start a new project wizard. Next, I'll give, give the name. Uh, this one we are uh, doing the blink so just click next uh, this is quite important uh, you have to make sure that you have selected the right board so first select the family so I'm, I have the max 10 and then select the name of the chip so you can see on the the main IC So once you have filled this, uh, you will get the board, the sorted board. So select that and click next and then finish. Yeah. So as you can see, after some time, uh, the project will be created. So this is the remote project we created. And as of now, we don't have any files. So first we have to go to create new file. Uh, click the Verilog uh, one. I'm using Verilog and click OK. So a new Verilog file has been created. Uh, for the Blink code, I already have the um code so i'll just copy and paste the code so i'll rename the module to demo blink and i'll create like i'll save the project so now we have the project saved so i'll just run through the code so we have the module uh, demo blink so we have one input clock and uh, we have 10 bits of led as output so why 10 bits is because we are uh, in the de10 light board which i have i have basically 10 leds so that i'm using i'm initializing all of them so that i can just blink one led and bring all the LED, uh, rest nine leds down i can pull down to zero so that there won't be any high impedance uh, and i'm you know i have a register uh, initialized uh, i have a register basically with the 30 uh, sorry 23 bits so this is basically used as a clock divider and at time t is equal to zero using the initial statement i'm putting the clock i'm initializing the value of the counter to zero so yeah so this this is an always block block with the positive edge triggered so whenever there is a positive edge encounter the value of the counter will be incremented by one and this is the tricky part so in this assign statement as you can see to the zeroth uh, bit of the led um, I'm putting the counters 22nd value. So what is this? Is the nothing but the MSP bit. So the MS bit of the uh, counter. So that the this clock will be keep uh, counting the value. So at one point the MSP will become high. So at that point the high that MSP value will be initialized to LED. So that's the beauty of the design statement. So whenever there is a change in the right hand side, it will uh, it will put to the LHS. And I'm bringing all the other LEDs from 9 to 1. Uh, I'm just pulling down them to 0. So, yeah. So, once we are done with the code, we have to, uh, this is the compiled design. So, we just have to double click it. So, it will compile the design and it will throw if there are any errors, possible errors that are there in the code. So, let's just wait for the compilation to happen. Okay. Uh, that's perfect. So, we have a uh, green tick which means we successfully did all these process so we didn't had any issues as of now so the compilation went well um, so we are done with the first part so the second part is assigning the pin so as I said so we have one clock and we have 10 LED 
bits so basically we have to map these to so as to say which of the pins in the FPGA board basically has to you know tied up with these pins so to do that uh, go to the assignment so to, to do this make sure that uh, you have the compilation done properly uh, then go to the assignments and click on the pin planner so this is the pin planner uh, you can see the top view of the board that you have selected so this is the board I'm having so make sure uh, this is set properly so coming down here as you can see there are 0 to 9 LEDs basically and one clock so the direction of the LEDs is the output and the direction of the clock is input and this is the location column that we have to uh, fill basically seeing the uh, data sheet of the FPGA that we are using so let's start with the uh, assignments of the LED first and then we'll do the clock so I'll sort it from 0 to 9 and I'll go to the manual so I'll search for pin assignment for LEDs perfect so we got this column so as you can see LED 0 to LED before that let's have a look of the board so this is the board so as you can see these are the LEDs so we have 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 is it yeah I started with 0 so basically 10 LEDs um, so yeah coming back here so this is the FPGA pin so this is the name of the pin that is connected to the LED 0 so we have to map it how to map it is like this so this is the name of the pin according to the code and in the location we have to paste it you can also see from the drive uh, drop down or whichever is convenient to I, I generally do this I just copy it from the uh, user manual and paste it so make sure the sequence is right else you will end up uh, arranging the LEDs in a different pattern that doesn't harm the LEDs though but uh, you will end up randomly blinking the LEDs yeah perfect so I'm done with the LED assignments and uh, coming to the clock so if you can see clock so we have to assign the clock so go back here for so basically we have three clocks uh, okay this is a different one so basically we have two clocks which are of 50 uh, megahertz uh, in two pins available so we can use any of them so I'll use the first pin which is pin 11 yeah, now you can see this clock we have used and these are the pins for which the LEDs are connected so once you're done uh, there is nothing like save here because once you assign it by default it gets saved so just you can close this and you are done so now just run the compiler again just to make sure that everything is right so yeah perfect so we are done so we don't have any compilation errors so we are done with the step two which is assigning the pins and the third step is to dump the uh, final binary to the FPGA so to do that first connect the board to the computer so I just connected it so now just to make sure that the drivers are installed go to device manager so once you go to the device manager in the USB section yeah go to the USB uh, universal CPL bus controllers just make sure that the Altera USB blaster is there so if it isn't there uh, you can just unplug the device and plug it again or you can use a different port because it has built-in driver installation so it has to install by itself so that's it so once you're done so as you can see here there is an option program device open programmer click on that so this window will open so once this window is open uh, you can see the board that you have selected in case if you don't see anything here just click on the hardware setup and click add, add hardware and uh, uh, you can see this USB blaster here just double click on this and close 
So basically, it has to pop in at that point of time at least. Um, that's it. So just click the board and hit the start button. So in few seconds, you can see uh, the progress has completed. And how can I show? Let me open my camera. Yeah. So coming to the board. So these are the 10 LEDs that are there in the board. And as you can see, it's one of them is blinking because we set it to high based on the counters MSB and the rest are pulled down to zero. Yeah, thanks for watching.